Now is our time for meditation, so I invite you to get things out of your lap, and if you're comfortable, close your eyes. We'll begin taking some deep breaths together, breathing in that breath of God. And I invite you to breathe in, God is, and breathe out, I am. God is. I am. And as we continue taking these deep breaths in and out, we begin to feel our shoulders relax off of our earlobes. We just let the chair fully support us as we move into this time of peace. feeling and acknowledging that presence and that power of God that we are right here, right now, in this moment. As God is all there is, and I am, the Christ of our being is the expression of God in and through us. And so I invite you from that place to imagine what if our soul's purpose, the whole reason that we're here on this planet, is to hold sacred place, hold that sacred space of God for our planet. What if we're here to see things rightly, to be able to know the truth that divine order is in and through everything always. What if we were like in the song imagined by John Lennon, we could see no war. We could see no violent protests. No greed, no hunger, no pandemics, no political strife. No poverty. Just imagine for me, if you will, to see what that world looks like in your imagination. And I invite you now to try that, to see it from the Christed beingness of who you are, from your heart space and through your crown chakra. Hold sacred space for our planet to heal right here, right now in this moment, in the silence. I think it is our soul's purpose to see things as they can be, as we would like to see them, just as we do that with our imagination in our own lives and set intentions and create the life of our dreams. 
by putting our focus on that which we desire, I believe our planet needs us to see peace, to hold in our hearts for peace for our world, to see people loving each other, not fighting, but loving each other, to see the world filled with harmony, to see everybody filled with joy with a smile on their face. When enough of us are holding sacred space for our planet, we will raise that consciousness even higher. The more of us that pray and meditate in this way, knowing that God is and I am an expression of God. We're not powerless beings, but powerful, magnificently creative expressions. Just imagine that we were all living as one mind, one heart, one love, all in harmony. I like what I see and I hope you do too. And I hope you'll visit again this time and space, but it's time now for us to bring our focus back into the room, wiggling our fingers and toes, We're so grateful for this opportunity to just have a, a little dip into the harmony and love that our planet is calling for in this particular time in our lives. And so it is, and so we allow that to unfold. Amen. So live into your soul's vision. I have to tell you, <laughs> My head is still spinning around and around and around. I have spent the last four days in Unity People's Convention on the computer, sometimes four to six hours a day, in sessions, in breakouts, in business meetings, in meetup groups, in uh, regional conference meetings, and, and it has been it has been amazing. You know, I have to tell you, honestly, I wasn't really looking forward to another virtual conference. I really wanted to be in person to see my peeps and my colleagues. But I have to tell you, it exceeded my expectations. And that's the reason I spent so much time in front of my computer this week, is because I am reignited. I am re-inspired. And I am seeing my soul's vision for myself and for this ministry in ways that I never even dreamed. So I invite you today to just explore with me this possibility that your soul's purpose is waiting also to reignite you and to help you to find that place in you that wants to be the best you can possibly be and serve in ways that you never thought that you could serve because our soul is tapping on us always that's spirit nudging always for our highest and best so we have this affirmation that we're saying because we're talking about imagination this month and this is our affirmation let's say it together my imagination brings possibilities to my life. Michelangelo, that magnificent sculptor and painter, once wrote, the great danger for most of us lies in not setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. This great artist took an old piece of discarded material marble or whatever it was, and created that marvelous statue of David. And when he was asked about it, how he could 
see that how he could, could create something that, that wonderful. He said, I just took away everything that wasn't David. He could see it in his mind. He had the vision in his imagination about what it was supposed to look like. So we simply cannot trivialize our power of imagination. We are incredibly creative beings, and we can make happen things that we don't even believe that we can make happen when we have that kind of focus. And when we join our imagination with our power of faith, there's really nothing that we can't have happen. I was reading in the book, The Twelve Powers in You, and it says, that imagination is the scissors of the mind. It says that we are cutting out our life from the universal bolt of divine material. Don't you love that? We have this ability to create and mold and shape the lives that we so desire. I love it because it says that we mold and shape at will. I love the visual of that. Like you're this, this giant pair of scissors. So when we understand creative principle and how that works, and we know that we're always co-creating with spirit, whether we're conscious of it or not, we are co-creating all the time. So we have this unlimited resource at our disposal because of the fact that God is and we are these divine beings because we have this universal intelligence that we can tap into any time, any place and we can bring forth that which is ours, that which is in our heart's desire, our soul's purpose and, and many of you know I put my purpose off, I push that thing down for decades and how how it just nagged me to death until I ended up going to ministerial school. I invite you to not wait because I feel like I'm living my dream. I'm living my soul's purpose now. There's a, a technique that they mention in the 12 Powers book that I really like, and it's, it's called the treasure map. I know some of you are familiar with it. It's used to picture what you're hoping to see manifest in your life experience. And there's a unity minister, Reverend Paulette Pipe, and she leads workshops in how to do treasure maps. And this is what she says about it. She says a treasure map is a visual prayer. The images turn into manifestations because your thoughts are prayers. When Pipe decided she wanted to graduate from the university with honors, she did a treasure map. And she did. When she wanted to get rid of all of the debt that she had, she did a treasure map. And she was successful. Then she wanted to go to Bermuda, all expenses paid. And guess what? Of course, she created a treasure map, and it was hers. She's completely sold on it. She says, it's not just wishful thinking. I'm seeing what my life could look like and feel like. So somewhere, when you're creating your treasure map, you put a symbol that reminds you of God or spirit or source. She likes to put sometimes fire and water, Holy Spirit, a picture of a church, a Bible, a picture of your guru. It could be anything. She says that whatever signifies to you that there is one power and one presence which is the only source of your good, is what will work. I took, I took a treasure mapping class in the early 90s, and I thought to myself, it was utterly just too simple. That you could cut out pictures and, and put them in front of you somewhere with it, where you could see it, and that you could actually make that happen. It's also similar to the vision board. Um, but it's absolutely true. It works, it works, it works because you are a divine idea in the mind of God and you are always creating. So today in scripture we are in Matthew chapter 6 verse 22. It's called the sound eye. You know this one. 
The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? So Jesus used that a lot. What does it mean to have an eye that is sound and single? Single focus. Set your intentions. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on expands. It's all principle three, isn't it? God is, I am, I think. What you think, what you feel, what you believe is what you create. So the searching quality of the mind selects out that which is good. And the single eye is open and receptive only to the guiding light of spirit. So it follows when spirit taps and nudges, it goes in that direction because it knows that's the best for us. We distinguish between sight and vision. Physical sight is only one aspect of vision. It's only our physical eyes, right? But there is spirit that lies back of everything. And what we want to be more tuned in, tapped in, is to our spiritual vision. What we can see with our spiritual eyes and what we can create. Jesus gave this great instruction in using our powers of faith and imagination when he said the eye is the lamp of the body. Today, we might say what you see is what you get. Our seeing, beholding, conceiving, believing, and imaging all need to be focused on the good. Because then we're single-minded. But we have to choose that. That is a choice that we make to pay attention to what spirit is leading us to. This light penetrates and overcomes the darkness when we focus on spirit. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to sabotage that which we are creating and visualizing and seeing in our mind's eye. We don't want to sabotage that by the things that we say, which is sometimes an example is, I wish him success, but I don't think he'll amount to much. Do you get that? Yeah. Or, I'm affirming health, but you know, I'm probably going to get that thing that's going around in the office. It cancels it out. And this is what we do a lot in our lingo. We'll say, you know, I'm, I'm affirming that I get such and such, or such and such happens. And then we turn around and tell our friend, you know, I prayed for a week and nothing's happened. So um, we just have to pay attention to spirit and listen to the clues and keep our focus on the good that we are wanting. These are examples of not being singled-eyed. But here's how it can be done. In that 12 Powers book in you, it not only talks about treasure mapping, but it also talks about how some people make image books or vision boards, anything that they can do to focus on the positive qualities that they want to incorporate and express in their lives. So specific imagery, imagery includes all of these techniques which helps us set up a goal and see it to be achieved. The other way that we create is more of an open-ended imagination. It's sort of like completely trusting in divine order. Let go and let God. And just let yourself be guided. Now, this isn't easy for a lot of us to do because that way we're giving up control. I think we feel like we have a little bit more control when we do a vision board or we do, do uh, a treasure map or one of those other things because then we're not just like totally letting it up to spirit. We're trying to direct our energy, right? But if you're really spiritually mature, you can just let go and let God and allow divine order to take place in your life. You can hold these images and you'll get flashes and inspirations. You'll get intuition in a heartbeat. We just have to be awake and aware and expectant. Well, the authors of the 12 powers in you book 
David and Gay Williamson, they know of what they speak because they were feeling like they were at sort of a cro crossroads in their life and they weren't really sure what direction they wanted to go and they'd been kind of asking spirit, you know, I wonder what's next for us. And they happened to be walking along a beach someplace and they saw carved in the sand a sign and I kid you not, this is what it said. Gold is here, follow up. Gold is here. Well, they happened to be on a Florida beach and they ended up moving to the Gold Coast of Florida. And they ended up co-authoring a book with one of their best friends and creating workshops and materials and they said that it was the best time in their marriage, the best time in their life. They went for what their guidance was. So they are living it as they are teaching it. In Isaiah 30, 21, their story reminds me of this scripture that says, and when you turn to the right, or when you turn to the left, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk it. This is the way, walk it. To me, that is trusting in divine order. And it's, it's not always easy to surrender, but really that's, that's the way our life unfolds is when we're paying attention to how divine order is taking place in our lives. There was a newspaper article um, this morning in the newspaper about a lady named Rebecca Gregory. And in 2015, she was running the Boston Marathon with her five-year-old son and one of those backpacks with the bomb went off three feet away from them as they're running down the street in Boston. And they had serious, serious injuries. And as a result of that, she lost part of a leg. She still has a lot of metal in her body. He has a patch on the back of his head and he had a shrapnel in his arm, the little five-year-old. And after this happened and they got home and recuperated from the hospital and everything, she said her little guy was so afraid. He said, Mommy, we're never leaving this house ever again. And she knew, she knew that she was going to have to do something. So they were seeking out resources for mental health. They, she knew, she was smart enough to know they had PTSD. They'd been through a terrible trauma. And, you know, their life was not the same after that. And so what happened to them was they found few resources available to them. And so she created something called Rebecca's Angels. And she created this foundation and raises money so that any family that goes through a trauma will have some help after that trauma to be able to walk through that experience and to be able to come out on the other side, that became her soul's purpose. She said in this newspaper article that even though her body is still filled with metal, even though she lost part of a leg, she wakes up every day and she thanks God for the blessings that are in her life, for all the good that's in her life. And they've come such a long way, they've healed but she said the emotional wounds were worse than the physical wounds. Trying to get over the trauma of it was worse than what had happened to her body. So inspiring. It's amazing, isn't it, how resilient we are. Just think about all these people that are going through the pandemic and all the things, all the losses that we have experienced this last 16 months. We've experienced losses in a lot of different ways. It's not just because we haven't been able to be together or anything like that. There's a lot of loss that has gone on. I ran across a, a book uh, in my study called Your Soul's Plan, and it's by Robert Schwartz. And this is what he has to say. Each of us has a divine purpose, a reason for being here that includes 
but goes well beyond our own learning. That is, we plan life challenges, not only to remember who we really are, but also to share ourselves, our unique essence with one another. Each of these souls came here to be the love that they are, courageous souls one and all. No one knows your soul's vision but you. No one else can discern your soul's vision but you. You're the only one that can do that. And this week, I got to see Robert Brummett in one of the videos uh, during the conference. And he is rolling out a spiritual direction program. Now, Bob Brummett and I talked about this over five years ago when I was still in Texas. And uh, he was visiting there and speaking for us. Spiritual direction is a program that helps people find and stay on their spiritual path. I was very excited about it because people who are ministers and licensed teachers and people who have counseling backgrounds, it's one way for them to help guide people. It's not like coaching. It's not like spiritual counseling. It's different. It's sort of like witnessing somebody's unfoldment. And he says that Unity is offering this new certificate for those who want to help people discern their spiritual paths. I think it's absolutely magnificent. And I'm hoping that in the near future, somebody from here will go and take those courses. They're going to be online. I, I don't know if they're meeting at, the, um, at Unity Village or not. But it's a wonderful opportunity to receive this credential where then you can sit and help witness other people's journeys to assure that their spiritual growth stays on course. It's an exciting time to be a part of everything. There's a book, you know, we're studying the three magic words by U.S. Anderson, but there's another book that he has that's called The Magic in Your Mind. And this is the advice that he gives. Place your hopes, your dreams, your ambitions, your talents, your very self, on a mental silver platter. Hand it over to spirit. Say, here, you take it. You run it. I'll listen and I'll follow your advice. I'll execute your will. If you take this mental stand, he says, without reservations, your life will be changed forthwith and you will have embarked upon the highest adventure possible. Moreover, from time to time, the images in your mind will manifest in the world exactly as you visualize them. It sounds to me like let go and let God trust in divine order is something that we can all do, and I believe you've got this. All right, it's time for a little joke. There was a person who was visiting uh, a mental institution, and the visitor asked the director, what is the criteria for someone to be admitted into your institution? And he said, well, it's pretty simple. He said, we fill up a bathtub full of water, and then we offer them a teaspoon, a teacup, or a bucket. And we ask them to empty the tub of water. And the visitor said, oh, I get it. The bigger the device, the quicker you empty the, you, you empty the bathtub, right? And the director said, no, that's not it. He said, a normal person will pull the plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So this weekend, we celebrate Father's Day. And I want to acknowledge all the fathers that are here all the fathers that are watching, all the people who acted as fathers, some of the mothers acted as fathers as well. The families are very different now than they were in the 1950s. And so I acknowledge each and every one of you because you're our unsung heroes, all of you, all of you dads. And I know some of you had good experiences and some not so much. I personally had a wonderful, wonderful dad and I miss him tremendously. I, um, I hope that you have a wonderful time celebrating 
this weekend with your dads or with the memory of your dads, if that's the way it is for you. I want to close today uh, with May Rowland. May Rowland ran Silent Unity for decades. She was an amazing being. There is a, a photograph, an actual painting of her in the lobby of the Silent Unity building, and she just glows. She's so magnificent, prayed with so many people over the decades. This is what she says. Faith is never passive. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Just do not just listen to me or anyone else. Get busy. Use your ideas. Too many of us excuse ourselves by thinking we do not have enough understanding to apply the ideas that we have. Do not delude yourself. Get busy, she says. And I think there's no time like the present. I think it's time for us to live our soul's vision right here and right now. And so it is, and so we allow that. Amen. Now is the time in our service when we get to give from our good back in to the community. So I invite you to take your tithes and offerings in your hand. And those of you that are at home watching online, if you'll punch that PayPal button or send something through Breeze, we are so grateful for all those who are doing automatic giving. We are incredibly blessed and so grateful. So let's say our tithes and blessings together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so. Now we close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Namaste, everyone. God bless.